never thought of it then, but now I do think of it. And we had a lot of happy times here. And I left here in 1950, but growing up here for 10 years, you know, it was quite an experience. Richard Carlick is coming home, not as a man, but as a child torn away from here so long ago. Number one, I know that I'm in Calcan territory. I also know that I'm in Waylon country. And I also know, above all, that God is real and He is with us. Lord, it's the same old tune, fiddle and guitar. Where do we take it from here? Rhinestone suits and new shiny cars. It's been the same. Stand back a bit, Riga. The Stikeen River is the lifeblood of the Taltan. It provides salmon and a way of life centuries old. In northwest British Columbia, the Taltan have carved out a land base that covers 11% of the province. Rich in resources, it was only a matter of time before the white man would stumble into their lives. The colonial history of northern BC and Yukon is linked directly to gold. In 1861, placer gold was found on gravel bars on the Stikeen River. The Stikine territory was quickly created and controlled by the British Columbia colony. The miners brought new diseases. Measles shattered the Teltan population. New competition for food also led to death by starvation. By 1910, only 250 Teltan remained, where once there were thousands. Wherever gold miners went, missionaries followed. One mined the land, while the other mined for the souls of the Taltan. A powerful recipe for disaster would soon take place. A mixture of the Christian agenda and the Canadian government's desire to rid the Indian of his savage way. Two primary objectives of the residential school system were to remove and isolate children from the influence of their home, families, traditions, and cultures, and to assimilate them into the dominant culture. Many Taltan children, like Richard Carlick, ended up here at the St. John's Residential School in Lower Post. They teach us that the Bible uh, says that uh, they should, you should love your neighbor and love your brothers and sister, but they were hypocrites. They taught us the opposite. They teach us to love, but yet, yet they, they di didn't show us any love. They wait for us to make a mistake or, uh, you know, make a mistake and then right there with a whip and ready to punish us. Still, other Taltan children were rounded up and shipped to the Chutla Residential School in Carcross, Yukon. The Roman Catholic Church operated the Lejac Residential School on the shores of Fraser Lake. It would also become home to innocent Taltan children. that it was wrong to separate children from rich and vibrant cultures and traditions, that it created a void in many lives and communities, and we apologize. 
for having done this. Our people have lived in trauma for a long time and so opening up the doors for healing I think will make a tremendous difference to our people. They were taken, there was sadness in our heart. The little voices we didn't hear anymore. We've been impacted and we need to start looking at what those impacts were and what they are today and start moving towards reconciling that for ourselves. In that prayer, it's going to be twice as strong. And someone else on top of that, three of us... In Telegraph Creek, these steps near the end of a long journey that for some Teltan started decades ago. ...amount of energy. When we do this, when we come together in prayer like this, we're going to generate you could say light, I guess, some light. And all of us know somebody who could use that light. Somebody who's struggling out there, somebody who's having a hard time. When we do this together like this, when we do this during a prayer, we can take that energy that we create and we can send it to them, we can direct it and give them help that way. And there are lots of us struggling out here, but it's changing. And the idea, the fact that we're here right now is the proof of that. So I'm honored... Today they gather for the next four days to be officially welcomed home by their own people. A ritual that many hope will spark a new healing journey for all Teltan. You know, that pain, that unspoken pain, it's been carrying like a heavy weight in our communities for so long. And that energy, nobody really could figure it out, but it was always there. You just, you're scared for what's going to happen next day, honest. When I was in the dark, you know, I got sexually abused, you know. And that sexual abuse still haunts me today. A lot of people say, you're going to, Charlie, you, you know, you're going to heal. I'm, I'm 75 years old now. And there is time that Charlie is not 75 anymore, he's six years old. People don't understand, you know, what we went through. I did a lot of time in jail, you know, when I was a kid. No comparison to residential school, honest to God, no comparison. They treated me better in jail than they did in school. The government and the institutions that wounded our people uh, did just that. They wounded us. They didn't kill us. They didn't succeed in wiping us out. And those, but those wounds, uh, the healing process is, is, is the scarring and the scar tissue is a, pro, is a form of healing. And all those, those scars will never go away. Um, they do heal over and then and they're there to remind us uh, forever. It's the first day and already a lot of old memories have been revealed. The gathering is about safety within ceremony. To help set things right, the sacred fire is lit and will burn non-stop for the next four days. It's a way to connect with a higher power, to unite with the Creator, and perhaps let Him take the pain away. Lord God, we look toward you today, for, uh, for all four days, we pray that it'll be a very good day every day. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Even, you know, 10 years ago, would we have thought that this ceremony could happen in the way that it has? Probably not. You know, um, so I believe full-heartedly that, you know, we can make significant strides and if we start in spirit and we work our way from that point of view um, 
you know, our people are resilient. They're amazing. They had their children taken away from them. Some former students were sexually abused and others physically abused. Many drifted between two worlds for decades after they were released from residential schools. Yet this evening they can still play traditional hand games and laugh with each other. While this evening is all about high spirits, tomorrow many Teltan will wear a different face. Their nation awaits the ceremonial return of so many adult children of residential schools. Personally, I believe that this is going to be a beginning for healing, healing our people. My father went to Lajac Residential School and he didn't go into great detail about the school and his experiences. Like he just did surface talking about what they ate, um, what type of work that they endured. When I was asked to do this, to participate and help out with this, I said yes because I wanted to honor my father in this ceremony and celebration. I wanted him to feel that he was welcome to come home because that's not what he had experienced when he did return. He experienced coming off the boat that came up the river and there was no one there to greet him, to take him home. Another lifetime ago, these Taltan made a trip across this bridge. They stood packed in the back of a transport truck headed for residential school. Today they're crossing it on their own terms, and this time family and friends are waiting to bring them home where they belong. This has been a long journey for Bobby and Gladys Kwok. He said that, you know what, they try to break me, but they couldn't break me. And the experiences that of the residential school, the people, what the experience has been talked about and it's been hushed a bit and it's come out and hushed a bit again and nothing really was done to celebrate them in the past. It's been a long time coming. We really need to feel and see the survivors' expression, their emotion. Welcome home, Marie. Welcome home. For me, personally, my healing journey started 22 years ago when I quit drinking. I did that all on my own. Those days, nobody even recognize the residential schools as much as they do today. And I just decided to do it on my own and went from there. Marge Leverin spent a total of nine years in residential schools. Those memories have shaped her personality and she says she's still trying to heal. Charlie said that we were child laborers and that is truthful because in Lower Post we never had no cleaning ladies. We did all the cleaning. I've seen, I've seen kids being punished and had to scrub the floor with a toothbrush. And that's where I can't positively realize how could people Go out, the ones that are healed, okay, fine. The other people that are not, why, why would you say more than you need to when you don't feel you're healed? And I don't feel I'm healed. 
I don't know if I'll ever be healed. We need to reconcile within our own nation as, you know, I think that's where it needs to start. And I think that the reconciliation with others will, will come. And um, everyone's going to be on their own path, you know, with that. Not everyone's ready. You know, not everyone even participated in the ceremony. And that's okay. I want to see tonight how many intergenerational survivors we have with us. People whose parents or grandparents went to the residential schools. Could you please stand up? If parents had it rough, science indicates the odds are their children will have it rough too. So even though they never went to Indian residential school, the fallout from that system also affected new generations of Teltan. You know, we were like a little army. I mean, I mean, they really did get into our heads so that throughout life that affected your, your thinking, your ability to make decisions or not. So that's part of that. I, I wanted to share that with my people. Yeah. I want to apologize to you tonight for all the harm we have caused you. Whether or not your parents are able to do it, or maybe they have passed on to the spirit world. I want to tell you how very sorry we are for what we have done to you. We didn't know any better. Son, I'm sorry from the bottom of my heart. I wanted to be a better woman. I wanted to be a better mother. I didn't know how to do that. I mean, everybody needs love. Everybody needs acceptance, but as a child, your spirit is broke, your heart's broken right in half, and you, you never recover. So you never feel right. You never feel you fit anywhere. And um, this is a big step towards that, this journey we had here. Yeah. I really thank the organizers because they, they don't know what they've done, I don't think. I don't think they know the impact they've had on our lives of the survivors. This next step is going to be about healing. It's going to be about our people and, and you could feel that energy in that hall in the, or just these last few days. It's a, it's a new kind of energy and you know that you know, something new is coming up for us and it's going to be good. The students have been welcomed home, but now there is still the matter of their collective pain to deal with. Family, friends and students carry with them juniper and balsam wreaths. They also have sections of the ceremonial arbor. These items will float downriver to symbolically cleanse the legacy of pain from Indian residential schools. I've come to identify after a while we were never formally welcomed home, eh? And, uh, and that's what others shared too, eh? That there was no welcome home. Whether you're Teltan, you know, you've been to the school, some of you are have a, a mixture of blood. This gathering is the work of a vision Rocky Jackson had to accept Indian residential school students home. A vision born out of his own experience. And, and I've seen that too myself because after I've been away, I come back and you hear things from your family that you've grown up, you've changed, you know. If you want to say that was like an informal welcome home, well that was and, and uh, trying to put one together to be formal, eh? That's what we're, and the song came about from that, eh? They were taken There was sadness in our heart The little voices We didn't hear anymore There was a silence no music in the air So we drank 
ease of pain in our home. And I think back on the, my mom sharing with me that, you know, son, you should be forgiving. You know, no matter what, you should be forgiving. And for the longest time, I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be forgiving for what happened, you know, like in residential school, eh, for how we were treated and for how the system changed us this way to be hard and, and to be uh, unforgiving at times. Eh? When we have suffered childhood abuse, happiness can become something that seems out of sight. And we believe it is out of reach and unattainable, and for someone else, but not for me. Andy Nyman spent the better part of his life on drugs, alcohol, and time in jail. A victim of child sexual abuse, he says the Creator saved him. And his message of hope begins with finding forgiveness. You know why there's so much gossip in our communities? Because people don't know how to forgive. You know why there's so much lateral violence in our communities? Because people don't know how to forgive. They don't have an understanding of what true forgiveness is. Now the beauty of forgiveness is that it is all up to you. It's up to you. You choose when. You want to forgive. But let me tell you from experience this tremendous secret that the sooner you forgive, the sooner you will let go of resentment and walk away free. You have what it takes to forgive. Don't let anybody ever tell you you don't because you have what it takes to forgive. And as I wind down here today, there are three simple things you'll need to heal. One is desire, two is courage, and three is connection. Studies show victims of abuse often feel guilt or shame for what happened to them. Many don't recall the abuse until years later. Andy reminds the former students that being abused wasn't their fault. You are a beautiful person inside. Under the hurt, under the abuse, under the shame, you really are a gift to us and to others. Because of what happened to you as a child does not make you a bad person. The person who did bad things and said bad things to you back then, they are the ones who need to carry their own shame and their bad actions. Not you, and not I. I had the privilege of watching the, the, the reefs and, and whatnot flow by the rock and out into the river, and as they dissipated into the river, it was a, a really symbolic moment as, as I would watch them flow down and di disappear out of sight. To me, that was something that I felt I took was Um, extremely um, spiritual and you wish to watch those hard feelings drown and go away. The wreaths are in memory of those residential school students who have passed away. They also represent former Teltan students who couldn't make it to this gathering. We gather here today to honor my daddy, Arvin Paul. It is sure as sure as the waters meet here today, we will meet again. Here now, come forward. Don't be afraid. 
With their shared duty completed, the Taltans celebrate the beginning of their collective healing journey. It will take time to get over what's happened to them, but the Taltan know it's a process that requires commitment. Um, we're going to just have to continue, you know, to provide opportunities for our people to talk about what's happened to them, to, you know, be angry about it, because they should be angry about it. But you know what? There, there are ways. There are ways to work through it and to um, move to a, a, a place of peace. Our key to success is, is, is taking back ceremony. And that's the key to survival, and that's what we need to focus on to move ahead. You know, it's, if you keep that ceremony and that culture and that language and the song and the dance alive and bring back those old songs and make new songs, and, and, and that's what builds community and builds family. I probably have not forgiven many, many people who suffered more than I have, who went through hell, have forgiven, I haven't. And that's my misery. I believe that's the last piece. And when that piece falls, it's going to be the day when I can say I'm free. You know, we can't hold on to our past, but we sure can look at our future. And it's time to move on, forget our residential school days and, and move on. And we're just uh, hoping, you know, that, uh, you know, our younger generation don't ever go through that again. The dusty gravel road beckons once more, and Richard Carlick answers its call willingly. He leaves behind a Taltan nation that is a little bit stronger than it was a few days ago. Healing is a journey taken one step at a time, and the Taltan took their first step with this gathering. The former Indian residential school students may be flawed, but they have the support of their whole nation, and they now know they belong. If you listen closely enough, you just might hear the childhood innocence that long ago belonged to this beautiful land. 